rise and ground, folks. Hope you guys had a good holiday, but it's back to business. Guys, I'm on the way to a brand new customer. This call that actually came in last night. Um, this is a brand new customer. He said that the heat just stopped turning on. Um, I think he said it's a gas furnace. But guys, I'm on the way there right now. We're gonna go take a look and I'll see y'all when I get inside. Peace. All right, guys. This is a ream. 90% furnace, put in 2010. And the customer said that someone else already came out here like two weeks ago and the heat wasn't working. And as soon as the other company showed up, the heat turned on. And the customer said that the other company replaced the flame sensor and it worked. But as soon as they left, the same thing happened. So. Guys, it sounds like they have an intermittent issue going on with this unit, and this is the first floor unit. They have two units here. They have this one for the basement and first floor, and there's another one on the second floor, but the one on the second floor is working fine. But guys, what's weird is that when I got here, and luckily I've seen this, when I got here, the only thing I heard was the inducing motor come on door switch hold on when I got here the only thing I heard was the inducer motor right and I took the doors off and I put my door switch on to hopefully try to look at a fault hole and as soon as I turned it back as soon as I put my door switch in the unit fired up so luckily guys I mean without the customer recording anything I actually heard the inducer run but I didn't I didn't hearing the ignition and this is a spark ignition unit but as you can see here you hear that this thing fires up so guys I'm gonna check that flame sensor again but like I said guys I mean I know I was even explaining this to the customer if the customer heard the ignition and it turned off after the ignition I mean that's a telltale sound that something's going on with the flame sensor but what the customer said was he just heard the fan run meaning the inducer motor and nothing nothing turned on it just turned back off so guys what i'm going to do is i got my manometer first things first is i'm going to check the inducer motor for inches of water column and if this is running strong enough chances are one of these two switches are sticking and I got what I need already here. So, but guys, let me check the inches of water column first and I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, guys, just for context, this is a single stage furnace. And you see one switch is rated for 0.40 and the other one is a 0.80. I'm sure you guys can see this here. See that? So what I'm gonna do is Take this hose off. And we're gonna check for inches of water column to make sure that this inducer is pulling at least a 0 0.80. Otherwise, this might not be a pressure switch issue. This might be a, an inducer issue. All right, let me zero this thing out. And guys, I had this manometer knock on wood for at least like 10 years. The only thing I had to do was replace the battery and the display is kind of shoddy, but guys, this thing works when I need it, so that's all I can ask. All right, instant water column, cool. All right. Yeah, this thing is at a 0.8.9. Yeah, this inducer is definitely strong enough. All right, guys, and you see that? Once again, if my inches of water column wasn't pulling equal to or greater than what the pressure switch is rated for, even if this inducer is running, that will indicate that the inducer motor is shot. Now, guys, not to rule out every circumstance, but you can always inspect the vent piping too to make sure nothing is clocking the vent pipe. But for the most part, like I said, if the inducer motor is running or not, and you're not getting proper into the water column, 
this furnace is going to throw a pressure switch fault 100% of the time. And like I said, guys, once again, this unit was working intermittently. So the customer said it works, and then it turns off, and then it turns back on. So, And like I said, that flame sensor, I already checked it out. That flame sensor is still good, but we're not even getting to the point of the flame sensor sensing the flame because the, the, I'm not getting ignition. And like I said, as soon as I got here, I heard this and do some motor run, and then it turned off. And as soon as I put the doors, I took the doors off, and I put my door switch in. Like I said, that's it turned right on. So, all right, sorry about that, guys. Another call just came in. But guys, yeah, what I'm gonna do since I know my diesel motors holding proper inches of water column, I am just gonna pop in two new switches. I'm just gonna do one at a time because the wires are kind of tricky, but. Let's get to it. And the filter is okay, but I'm probably just gonna pop a new one in. Like it's not white, but it's not black. It's kind of like tannish, but since I got the doors out, if the customer doesn't have another filter, I'll pop one in, but all right guys, let's get busy. Let me pop this switch in, I'll be right back. And guys, once again, we use the universal air switches. This is the part number and that's two quadruple zeros. But look at this guys. Since I know we have a 0.4 and a 0.8, I'm gonna use the same color springs on both because a natural color spring can do a 0.3 to, through a 0.90. To be honest, this is the normal color that we use. Unless, like I said, every circumstance could be different with different manufacturers and different switches. But the only two colors we used are natural and black. I think I used the yellow before, but that was a while ago on a different manufacturer, but most importantly, you know what size the old pressure switch is rated for, and you just match it up. It takes two seconds. Last thing you want to do is guesstimate and put in the new switch at a different rating. That could either cause this unit not to work or cause the unit not to work. So, guys, like I said, this is pretty simple, but I'm going to put one in, and once I put the first one in, I'm going to hook my manometer up to the lower port, and I'm going to make sure that this port, this area here, is at negative. 0.40 so all right guys let me get to it i'll be right back yes i got one switch in and before i do the other one remember this one is the one that went to the bottom side of the heat exchanger and as you can see that's a 0 0.40 i just replaced a 0 0.80 and remember the normal color spring i think is a 0.3 to 0.9 so i'm going to use that for both of these but let me show you We only need a 0.40 to close this switch, and I'm at a 0.72. Now guys, just to give you a scenario, if I was only at like a 0.2 or 0.1, then something would be going on with my heat exchanger. So and remember guys, this is a 90% unit, so this would be like the secondary heat exchanger towards the bottom. And remember, if your heat exchanger is not in a negative pressure, God forbid, let's say if the heat exchanger was leaking or if something was going on, maybe a, a hole in the heat exchanger, your pressure switches definitely wouldn't close. You'll either have severe leaking, you'll have water leaks underneath the furnace, or two, you wouldn't have the heat wouldn't run because the pressure switch wouldn't close. And the pressure switch has to prove that negative pressure in order for you to get flame. So, yeah, guys, so now, and that's what makes this manometer so important because, because without this tool, there's no way I could confidently tell you what's what i couldn't even tell you if the inducer is running because most of the time guys the inducer would still run and not even pull the negative pressure so that's why i say i always have the right tool for the right job you really can't troubleshoot pressure switches or inducer motors without manometers so having the right tool and knowing what to do with it guys is paramount to troubleshooting furnaces and some boilers by the way because guys 90 percent boilers most of them probably do have inducer motors and if that's the case guys inducer motors means you're going to need a tool to ensure that this inducer motor is working properly. So, all right, guys, that's enough yapping. Let me get back to action, and let me put this other switch in, and I'll see you all in a little bit. Peace. All right, guys. I got my second one ready to roll, and guys, maybe it's a proprietary thing with some manufacturers, but look at this. I want you guys to try to explain to me what the reason for this is. You see these spade connectors? This one is normal. And these are small. And they don't fit 
on the new Switch. I don't know, guys. Maybe it's like in the in the design. Maybe this is how they know which switch go or what wires goes to what switch. I don't know, but it's kind of stupid, guys. I got new spade connectors. I gotta cut these two out and I'll put new spade connectors on. But yeah, I know with some carrier or ICP units, the common wire on a blow motor is smaller than the rest of the well, the neutral wire on a blow motor is smaller than the rest of the neutral. So. You got to use a smaller spade connector. Otherwise, it's not going to fit on the board. But just another another hurdle to jump. But, guys, all right, let me uh, get the two new spade connectors and let's mount these bad boys on. And I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys. Got my two switches in. And I replaced the smaller spade connectors on one of the switches. And now I'm just testing the unit before I put the doors back on. And guys, you heard me say this before, pressure switches could 100% cause intermittent issues. But guys, most of the stuff you have to really see in order to confirm the diagnosis. But guys, since I already know that flame sensor got replaced and I actually seen the inducer run and then the unit turned off when I got here with the doors on, I already knew that, like I said, it was a day giveaway that one of these two pressure switches was probably sticking. But guys, like I said, to avoid going back and forth again and coming back out here, potentially to do this exact same thing over again, instead of just doing one, I just pop both switches in and we're good to go here. And guys, I gotta go back to the truck and put a new filter in and we signed this customer up for maintenance. So yeah, guys, like I said, I already got burnt <laughs> more than once troubleshooting pressure switches for instance on these 90 percenters you often will have more than one switch i always did one at a time and i told myself if i gotta come back i'll do another one because it's not wrong with replacing both at least i know now that, like i said this customer is starting off clean with two brand new switches and moving forward we can just try to keep this unit as clean as possible with maintenance so they're good to go but all right guys i gotta clean up and put the doors back on and i gotta get to another call there you have it, no heat, intermittent issues. We popped in two new pressure switches, everything else is clean. We're gonna put in a new filter and we're good to go. Peace out, I'll see y'all in the next one.